This week, we're joined by David Weeks of Mars Brewing to discuss Chicago on Tap 2024. This is episode 134 of The Malting Hour. What's the hats on the hops, guy, yeast, and speech? This is The Malting Hour, where we talk about our drink and tell you what we think every other week. And if we get drunk, well, we might slur our speech. Got the gift of gab, the friends who wish you had. Join us for a drink, join us for a laugh. Time is never wasted, where you getting wasted? The Malting Hour here, people, people, take your places. People, people, take your places. Welcome to the Malting Hour. I am one of your hosts, Tony Gullick, joined always with Brandon Winninger. And we are joined with a special guest, David Weeks. Hello. Hi, David. David, why don't you tell everybody where you're from? I live on the south side. <laughs> I live, All right. And welcome. <laughs> I live in the brewery. I am a brewery rat or mouse or cat, whatever. Uh, yeah, no, I live on the south side of Chicago in Bridgeport. I used to live in Rogers Park for about 20 years. There you go. Uh, but when I knew I wanted to work for Mars, I moved down to Bridgeport. There you go. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And we're, we're going to talk about Mars Brewing. But the reason why we have you on here is uh, this is the second time where we're, we're talking about it because we love it so much. It was a lot of fun to do last year. But it's uh, Meals on Wheels Chicago on Tap. An amazing event. It is. It was a lot of fun last year. Uh, we had... Uh, it was... It's the end became a blur for me. I ended up we we had a little area set up over by um, Old Irving and Revolution mm-hmm. and Howard Street and Sipes and we know all of them and we ended up uh, hanging with all <laughs> hanging with them and, and having a lot of drinks. Yeah. I did not drive that night, so that was good. But the event itself is just it's really cool. It's yeah, uh, it's for a good cause. I love the event. I love the venue. Yeah, the uh, venue's beautiful. Theater on the lake. It's gorgeous. Uh-uh. I've never, and I think I might have said this in the last time we talked about this, but like I had the Meals on Wheels is the only time I've been at the theater on the lake. And yeah, but it's like here. impressive. And there's like a full restaurant like right in mm-hmm. front of the place, right? Yep. Um, it caught me off guard because I didn't know, I, I thought I was in the wrong place at first. I was like, I think we were walking in and Becca was like, this doesn't look like a beer tasting yeah, thing. And I'm like, like, this is a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I did get the valet parking. Though. It's open year round. Yeah. That, the really? Restaurant. Yes, it is. Oh, wow. Ooh, that'd be fun to I, and like winter. again, my earliest memory of that place is you used to be shuttered on the lakefront, right? And you know, every time we got off that exit, I'd be like, "What is that building?" And then when they reopened it, they their first chef was uh, Cletus. Cletus from uh, Fountainhead. Mm. Yes. Mm. Um, and R.I.P. Yep, and he had his oh, own place. That place. Um, you, so, but. The the things they've done to it is awesome. I mean, it just looks like such a cool building, and it's. Yeah. Um, I think that was the perfect spot for that place. Yeah. So I used to ride my bike past it, uh, and I think it was at one time used as like maybe I want to say a TB clinic or something. Oh. Uh, after one of the world wars. Oh really? I, I think so. I could be making this up, but I just remember riding my bike past it and thinking, "Wow, that that's where." People recuperated from some some illness. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a it's a great story if you're making it up. So you know, it could make. <laughs> <laughs> I got a aunt Dorothy who was a nurse, so maybe it stems from that. But yeah. Uh, but on that note, what are we drinking? Oh yeah, um, David, why don't you tell us what we're drinking? We are enjoying a lovely Chicago Land Lager mm, from Mars. Yes, it's a Polish Lager. It's delicious. It's about five. Almost five and a half percent. How can it be a Chicago land lager if it's from Mars? <laughs> oh, nice. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're right into that one. Oh, that's good. Uh, what, what makes you know what, what makes a Polish lager? Do you, does anybody know off the top of their head? I'm not sure what it is. You, you get a Polish brewer. Yeah, I think it's because it's Polish. <laughs> <laughs> well, count me because I'm Polish too. I was just curious. I do like it, and I wouldn't have expected that to be. You said five and a half, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, that drink's really light. I'm trying to think of like, com- I, and I don't want to say commercially available because that's not a, like a correct term to use for like, you know, European beers. But I, I know there's like Polish lagers out there, and I'm not yep. like I'm spacing on names now. I had one when we were at Phase Three uh, a couple weeks ago. No, no, no. But I'm talking about like Uh-oh. from Poland. Oh, oh, the large brands. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Isn't it Je- uh, is yeah. Polish? Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. I, I do like Jevitz. It's tasty. I feel like that's a Chicago, like at least in the northwest side, that is a staple. All the shops night. have it, yes, absolutely. For and sure, it's, it's not bad. But if you have more than two, you start kind of feeling it, <laughs> like and not in the best way possible. <laughs> Offense, <Jimmy, it's, laughs> Jimmy, it's, it's, still have you. Uh, they have an IPA as well that I tried recently. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's interesting. 
That's yeah, cool. That's right. But that's not why we're here. Um, we're talking about uh, the Meals on Wheels, uh, Chicago Untapped. I always want to say Chicago Untapped because, you know, Untapped the app, but it's the first thing that comes into my head. Um, but this is the best of Chicago breweries on tap. There it is. For Meals on Wheels. That is how I should remember it to not say Untapped. It's on tap. And the event this year is Thursday, April 25th, 2024, just like last year. If you care about the NFL draft, don't. Just get the updates on your phone and come hang out with us and support Meals on Wheels because all that money goes to a good cause. Was that was the draft last year at that same time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I know football, so sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. Um, I have a list. I had a list in front of me of, of participating breweries. I, I had a sneak peek at one point. I wasn't sure if it was up there, but now I know. It's an amazing list. Yeah. There's also some amazing restaurants, too. Yes. Uh, I'm very excited. Um, there's one place on there I haven't had, and that's Crust Brewing. Uh, and they're one of the, the, the food vendors. Oh, we uh, talked about them recently. We did. Um, and they're also, you know, participating as the breweries. But um, so Are they doing food and? Yeah. Ooh, so is cool. Eris. Eris will also be there. Nice. Uh, Conrad Sight Brewing will be there as well. We had a fun episode uh, with them. Corridor. Crushed by Giants, Dry Hop, Double Clutch, another, a lot of guests. This is pretty much a whole, uh, every single one, almost every single one of these breweries have been on here. Uh, oh, didn't, and, we, didn't we, you have to badger <laughs> everyone we knew last year? Yeah, we were like, yeah. hey, let's so just those, ask everyone. Some of them stuck around, so that's great. But then we have Flipside and Go Wasn't Brewing. Badgering. Go Brewing is going to be there, which is great. We just did that for the, the for, um. Non-alcoholic. Thank you. Dry January. Dry January. Yep. Um, those are delicious. They're really great. good. We drank their double IPA, which was really tasty. Yeah. We liked that. Uh, Green Star Brewing and, uh, at Uncommon Ground. Hardly Water. Hot Butcher for the World. Hopewell, Mars, of course, uh, Old Irving, and Revolution. Those are the list of the breweries there. So if you've listened to the show, you've heard uh, us talk about more than half. Uh, I'd yeah. say three-fourths of this list we've talked about. It. And most people, I'm sure, if you're living here in Chicago, you have had these beers. So what better time to come out and have samples of uh, all these different beers um, from all these awesome breweries and then all the food as well while you're still, you know, Supporting a good cause like Meals on Wheels. Definitely. So, um, since we're, you know, kind of diving into this kind of early, uh, Dave, how'd you get involved in Meals on Wheels? Uh, I've been a big fan of Meals on Wheels for a long time, and it was during COVID that I was actually away. I was in Virginia as my mother's caregiver. Um, I thought during COVID, it seemed like the need for Meals on Wheels would have grown, like, significantly, right? Yeah. More people would be, like... Their relatives couldn't get them a meal. And I just remember thinking, I have to do something, even though I wasn't here. So I started contributing then. And when I, as soon as I got back to town and started working for Mars, I looked them up and said, hey, you know, what can I do? What can Mars do? Let's, let's get involved. Um, yeah, no, I think it's an amazing organization. And I think last year they served something like over 4 million meals. I believe there are 13,000 wow. seniors and people with disabilities that, you know, Meals on Wheels helps them get their meals, uh, meet the needs. It's incredible. And then I've also helped set up the um, pantry that they do once a month, which is just really touching. A huge truck comes, unloads tons of produce. You set it up just like a market. Oh, very cool. And they come uh, get their groceries. That's awesome. There's even a pet supply. You know, so there's oh, like that's pet food that's supply. Really cool. I didn't it's know incredible. that. Yeah, it's amazing. That's I like awesome. the, I'll say I like the idea of the the market too. Like that's nice to just set something up so you can go and get you know you're not just having something delivered to you. You're going to the market to you know get the ingredients you want and gonna make your own meals. It gives people an excuse to get out of the house and go. Yes. Absolutely right. So if they right. can, yeah, if they can. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean that's that's, that's a that's nice. I, I wasn't aware of that either. So I joined the associate board, and then this year, uh, at my bequest, I guess you would say, uh, Mars <laughs> is sponsoring the glassware. Awesome. Which is exciting, and it looks awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. I have, like... Uh, You're on Xbox. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Sorry about that. Edit that. What, where are we at in the recording? So I can edit that out. Nine minutes and, like, 12 seconds. Yeah, good. Uh, the glassware last year was very nice, and I actually have, like, three glasses. I have too many taster glasses, so I'll see how many I can come away with this year. So that's exciting. So, cool. Yeah, and some of the merchandise, I was looking at it today. Um, there's 
more this year mm -hmm. than last year. Uh, I saw the hat. I saw the bottle opener. I think there's... I know there's a brewer shirt, which is pretty cool. I kind of want that. It's like a work really shirt? A or, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, there's a, uh, and there's a t-shirt with all the yes, participants. All the, yeah, which is super cool. Yeah, you know, can't awesome. go wrong with that. It's like a concert shirt, except, you know, it's from for brewers. beer. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Those are like the shirts we made for kegs for kidneys. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. We list Back all the, the beers on them, or all the brewers. So, um, so is there... The question I had was, it, so this year, like, what is the focus? Actually, no, not, not even this year, but, like, years in general. What is the the money that's being raised here? What does that go to? Go directly back into the organization? Or do they have it set up to do specific, like, just meals or, like, the market? Or is it just general just funds for the nonprofit? I don't know specifically, but I think it probably goes back in in general. I don't know if it's funding specifically, like, a pantry or what. I think it's a general fund. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah. yeah, I think from what I remember, I think even last year we may have talked about it that it's just straight back into the organization to keep doing you know yeah. general things. And there was music last year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there music this year? There is. Oh boy, There's the music the... last year was very good. You know I... what? I think it might actually. I want to say it's the same band. It's the same band. That would be fantastic. Who? I don't remember who it was. I want to say Leadfoot. Oh, I think so. I think yeah. So. Yeah. Does that they were sound great. Right? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, they were great. Uh, I feel like that was it was real nice to you know, it was real nice to go in <laughs> and while the band's playing and like all the beer and and food as you walk like back you're you're further away from the stage but you can still hear it so it's nice that like you know there's you're not standing in front of the stage the entire time or having music you know blasting you but if I was gonna choose music to have blasting in front of me for this event I would choose them. Brandon, you motioned to me you had an empty glass. Indeed. This is not acceptable. Oh, sorry. I'm almost there. <laughs> we're, taking our, we're taking our time over on this end of the bar. Uh, would you like to choose something? So we do have more Mars. Also have some other... I'll take that one. Don't point it. You got to... Uh, that one. That one? Okay, cool. It's going to be from Hopewell then. <laughs> I, just, I didn't want to choose. That's why I said that. <laughs> oh, boy. Um... This one I've never had, guys. I don't know if you ever had this. Cold Call. It is a Kolsch style ale from mm. Hopewell. Mm. Well, I, and actually, I'm glad that you chose that because it's still in that lager realm. So yeah, you know, I didn't want to go, you know, full steam here and go straight into you know hot butcher for the world. Where you know, I mean, I love hazy IPAs. We know this, but also um, I don't want to blow up my palate. We got yeah. some other stuff. If you want to blow out your here. palate, I could bring a citra, citra, citra. <laughs> I mean, I do like that as well. That's a good one. Uh, I and with if we're gonna choose a hop to blow my palate out with, I'd rather it be citra than anything else. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Cheers. So you talked about um, you were in Virginia being a caretaker for your mother, and then you came back to start working for Mars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, how, like, what was the reasoning by that? Were you just looking for a job, or did you specifically want to work for Mars? I mean, I had wanted to work for Mars. I had wanted, before I left to go to Virginia to care for my mom, I had wanted to get into the food and beverage industry. Um, before I left, I was working for Chicago Public Schools. Okay. So I was a one-on-one -on -one for kids with special needs. And I was uh, very fortunate. I had a school that I just loved in West Town called Mitchell. Bobcat for life. And, uh, shout out, shout out. Shout out to nice. Mitchell. <laughs> um, but yeah, when I came back, I wanted to do something in food and beverage. And Ed, the owner of Mars, was someone that I knew would have opportunities beyond just beer and the brewery because he also has a gallery and the whole buddy system, all of that. Um, the buddy shop and the Chicago Cultural Center. Lots of opportunities and just a good place, seemed like for me as an artist to... Be able to do more than just beer yeah but i wanted to be a part of the brewery too yeah so, and sales for me turns out to be a perfect fit i love it nice yeah i was, I was gonna ask where did where did, where in like the brewery did you see yourself go was that where you thought you were gonna end up in the beginning or i did didn't you have, know you didn't know you just wanted to <laughs> i want to be a part of the brewery yeah i wanted nice. to be a part at the time the position that was open was on the canning line so that was like a perfect introduction yeah and after the first day my shoulders were killing me you know <laughs> i was like wow okay this is strenuous yeah. and then uh after just a few days they needed a driver and I was like, I'm an excellent driver. So I, <laughs> I know how to drive. I'm an excellent driver. Yeah. So I was a delivery driver for almost a year. 
And then uh, I know a lot of people in the industry, so I just started opening up accounts, and they're like, if you know, you want to do that, then do that. Nice. So then sales, it was. You've got to make a job for yourself. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, it never worked out for me. I'm still in a warehouse <laughs> so many years later. <laughs> I didn't try as, as well. I mean, I did, dri- I did drive a little bit for, for Lake Effect, which was nice. <clears throat> and then, you know, hurt my back. So <laughs> that'll do it. Would, uh, careful. <laughs> yeah. I learned to live with my knees. I also, also ask for help when there's a keg that needs Pe- to be lifted from the <laughs> ground. People would see me come up with a hand truck with like seven or eight cases and they'd be like, let me help you. And I'd be like, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Nobody, people saw me and they're like, go to the car. basement. Go to the basement with the keg. I'm like, okay, I hope I don't die. I remember Roll one, it down the stairs. <laughs> one place I had a keg and I was trying to get it maneuvered to go down the stairs and everybody, like all the heads in the kitchen were like, Vroom. Like, watch it. Is he going to make it? Uh, <laughs> he looks like he's going to fly around the keg. I mean, you thought uh, your shoulder hurt from canning. Like, yeah. <laughs> that, that could, like, blow your back Absolutely. out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. God. I, read, I was, I, I, I enjoyed moving and delivering cases than the kegs. When there yeah. was a keg delivery, I was always like, oh, man, this sucks. Mm-hmm. But very grateful that Clint gave me a job there for a while. It was very And nice. the stairs in a lot of places are pretty frightening. Absolutely. Uh, when you get further into the city, they have not been redone. They're just painted <laughs> yeah. wooden steps that kind of slant turn. To the, yeah. <laughs> slant to the left There's and a turn. A turn. Yeah. And the ceiling is only like five feet high. Once you get down there, you're like, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> And I just dragged the two wheeler up the stairs. Kukum, kukum, kukum. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Totally. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's what you get. Yeah, for having exactly. bad stairs. Ugh. So we talk. You know, since we're talking about Mars, um, they have two locations. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, just if you could tell us where they are, so people know where to to find Mars. Sure. The big brewery and tap room is down on Iron Street. In I always say Bridgeport, but I think technically it's McKinley Park. So right off of Thirty Fifth. And uh, just one block east of Ashland. And then there's another venue up next to Margie's Candies. Mm, that's the one I've been to. On Armitage, Western, and Milwaukee. Is that called Life on Mars? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep, that's Life nice. on Mars Community yeah. Club. There you go, the full What was that place before it was Mars? Because, I mean, I've Great I've never been to the Margie's. I've, <laughs> it's funny, because so I've never been to that Margie's. I've only been to the one that they opened on Montrose. Really? So, yeah. Huh. Which is... Gone now, I think. No, it's still there. Oh, it's still there? Yeah. I was just there today. (laughs) I mean, I drove by it like a couple weeks ago, and there was like a line out the door. Um, But yeah, like, so I've never been to the one there, and I'm trying to like envision in my head what was there before, and it's been so long. Actually, I probably drove it by, drove by today when I was picking up my fun sleep machine. Um, (laughs) But I didn't even pay attention. Like, I didn't like. No, it's 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 great. Uh, Clark and I went there before heading down to. Think City Winery to go see the crash test dummies. We did a whole thing. We did a tour of uh, stopping at different places. We started at Hot Butcher and then went to Life on Mars, and then had a beer somewhere downtown before going to the McDonald's headquarters. Oh and my goodness! Having you did the whole circuit. One of the worst McDonald's sandwiches I've ever had in my life. What country was it from? France, but uh. it's, it was it, it, it was just the bread was too much, and we were expecting something. Also, we were getting McDonald's, so I mean things were bad. Yeah, you set your bar as low as possible. Yeah, but we thought like, oh man, there's going to be something fun, and I was like, so it's just the the burger on like a roll, or like a sub roll kind of. He is a burger on the French bread. Yeah, pretty much. That was a good, good, good French accent. Really? <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, but um, I like I like the size of Life on Mars. It's it feels very. Um, Lounge is very comfortable. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a cool very space. Nice. Yeah, uh, and now it's open for coffee service too. Oh, sweet! Ooh. And they even have little breakfast buns in there. Oh, nice! Because it does. I mean, I can I can see that during the day. It it because I mean, also we'd already been at Hot Butcher and had a bunch of beers there, and then made our way to Life on Mars. It was all Uber everywhere. Uh, we did not drive. Good. Um, yeah, but. Uh, I could see that being a perfect spot also for coffee. That's actually a really good way to utilize that space, too, because it's busy yeah. over there during the morning. And, Definitely. You know, why not yeah. cash in on that as well? A lot of foot traffic, a lot of people on CTA, bus yeah. and train. Exactly. i got to get back over there. And I probably should go to the actual brewery itself. <laughs> and the actual brewery now, too, is just like uh, fully programmed. There's stuff going on all the time any really? night that you walk in. And it's very busy. It's oh, wow. really... Really nice to see. That's awesome. That's exciting to hear. Yeah, we've 
as we alluded to in the beginning, I don't know if it was actually part of yeah, this is part of the recording, but we've been talking to you for about a year now, trying yeah. to, and we and we get it. There's been was pl- don't worry, you're you're not alone in that camp of people we've been in contact with. Like we're ready to do this. This is great, and then something happens. Let's do a podcast. Yeah, sounds oh, great. It sounds like they're willing to make it as easy as possible. <laughs> Wait, you mean they'll come to the tap room and just sit with yeah. us right where we work? <laughs> Any day ought to work. How about Thursday? No? Monday? No? Okay. So, it'll happen. Yeah. A day that Absolutely. ends with Y. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, we definitely want to come come out there uh, to the actual facility. We can do a full, like to do a full history of, of Mars and where it's This starting. is our 10-year, uh, we'll be turning 10 this year, too. Yeah. So this, it, perfect. Let's you know make what? it happen. I think I saw something about, a post Good. about that. But oh, wait, the Brewers are texting me right now. They said they're down for it. Perfect. Awesome. Oh, okay. great. <laughs> That we'll is. just we'll just lock in the day and let them know when we're available. <laughs> well, that'd be great because that's another ten year anniversary uh, episode where we're sitting down with somebody. Last year we did uh, Temperance. Temperance. Yeah. Oh, nice. Temperance yeah. celebrated their ten years. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we had a lot of fun on that episode. That was great sitting in the back with them. Uh, and I love Temperance. They've they've yeah. great beers. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, real quick, what do you guys think of this? Uh, this what is it? It's a Kolsch. Yeah. yeah, cold call, cold style ale from Hope. It was good. It's clean. It's clean. It's good. Yeah, I think it was a good follow up to uh, the Chicago Land there. That was really good. Good call. I uh, yeah, way to go, Brandon. Good pick. We yeah, you pointed <laughs> over. To Next, do that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna David pick one. So <laughs> you can choose from what you've. What, we can, we can do another Mars beer for sure, or you can choose from the gamut of the. Uh, I mean, because you know. Mars will. Oh, should have made him do blind. Oh, uh, no. That, well, yeah, that would have been fun. But no, Selfishly, I'm just going to say yeah. Synthesizer Showroom. Let's do it. Because I absolutely love this beer. I think I've had this because I think I bought it because of the can art, which is super cool. I'm almost positive I had this, and I'm, I'm a big synthesizer. I'm going to pass it off we're, to you guys. We're just first. coming out of Synthfest. 2024. So I actually, uh, I saw that, and I know some performers who, J plus J equals, okay. I forget, oh man, I know them from a long time, and I'm still kind of, well, I'm acquaintances with them. Uh, J plus J, uh, there's something else involved with that, but I saw them all set up with their synths and, and moves and shit like that, which I wish I would have known. I didn't know about the fest. I was just not paying attention because that's right up my alley of stuff that I love. So how was that? It was festival? incredible. It was over three days. It was at both venues. Wow. It was just, yeah, it was wall to wall synthesizers, every pos- every possible sound you could want to hear out of an electronic instrument. That's so cool. Very, very fun. Yeah, I need to put that on my radar for the next time you guys do that. For sure. Because I, 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 are you following Mars on Instagram? I am. Except, okay. I've, t- I've 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 fallen off pretty much all of social media except for when we go on for the podcast. Only yeah. because I just feel like everything I see there is an, a recommendation, and I I don't need recommendations. I'm you have enough. I'm that already you're trying fo- yeah. to pursue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. following. How many yeah. more things do I need recommended to me? So it's even like on. It's overwhelming. I don't have the Facebook app on my phone anymore. Um, and you know, Instagram has kind of become the same deal. Where I'm like, I don't yeah. know if I'm subscribed to you, but oh no, I'm not. You're another suggestion. So I feel like I miss a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, it's a lot. There's a lot. If you guys have a newsletter, Ooh. I'll stay on top of that because that's probably what I need to do. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to find that I like getting newsletters from breweries to know what's new. That's how I stay on top of Hot Butcher stuff, too. So. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> oh, the Synfest, so I'll stay on top of that. Um, I do want to talk about... I do. Oh, geez. Um, I didn't take a sip of the beer yet, but I did want to talk about... I'm going to pull up the list here that I have. Because there's... One of the things that also helps uh, raise money for while well, at Meals was by the way, everybody, uh, we're going to put the link in like we did last year where you can get the tickets. And at the end of this episode, if you stick with us, we'll give you a code to save $15. We can't, we can't give it to you now. If we give it to you now, you're just going to stop listening and go get the tickets. I mean, that's a discount fine. code? Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> See, it's great. What an opportunity. <laughs> So stick around. Don't that turn away. Coming. Don't touch that dial. <laughs> There's a, there is a, a raffle uh, with a whole bunch of, of, of stuff. I have a list in front of me. It's insane because I was, I was scrolling through it. And what stuck out, stood out to me was uh, there's a lot of theater stuff. That was the top thing. And I didn't realize how much other stuff was on here. So I was just the theater stuff alone. I was super excited about like there's Broadway in Chicago, Gene Siskel Film Center, 
Drunk Shakespeare, Improv Olympics, Second City. I mean, just that stuff right away. There's other things. And so there's all these things that you can win. And again, all the money goes right back into Meals on Wheels. It helps uh, people who need food uh, get food, you know, if they can't get it themselves. But some of the other things, I mean, there's, uh, let's see, Chicago Food Planet Tours. I don't even know what that is, but you get a gift card for that. (laughs) That sounds exciting. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing random things here. Dry bar shops, not sure what that is, but one blowout, including one deep conditioning treatment, that sounds like it's for your hair. I'm going to blow out. You know what? I'm going to bid on that one. I do know that there, I saw it, and I have to go back to, to, to what I was told, but I know that there is something about a trip to Mexico. Yes, there is a trip. Ah, uh, yes. There's raffling off a trip, Cancun, Mexico, and tickets for that are $100. And that's, geez, a five-night stay, two at the Western Resort Spa, Cancun. I want to sign up for that. Yeah. I'll pay $100 awesome. for that. For sure. Yeah. $100 per entry, and it, you don't have to be there to win. So if you leave and you win, you can still go, Brandon, you missed all of that. There's a chance to win a trip to Cancun. We're going. What? Uh-huh. We could just go to Cancun. Just buy the ticket. We'll go. Um, we'll pack our CPAPs, and we'll get on the plane. <laughs> I'll shoot, I could have mine by then. Yeah, it's, it, that was just like some random... Uh, I know I kind of went fast through that. I apologize. I... I, I Get nervous about what are there restaurant I, things on there? Thank you know what David? I think I think there is. Thank you. That's um, usually what gets yeah. me. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm like, wait, dinner? Uh, let's see. Food. I'm, I'm, I'm see if I can not butcher some of these names. I'm going to ones I can read. Home Slice is on there. Eris is on there. Broken English Taco Pub, Crust Ooh. Brewing, The Dearborn, Church Street Brewing, Tao Group. There's a lot. Como. Awesome. Five hundred dollar gift certificate. What? Taco Rio. I'm gonna blow this. Chingon? Uh-huh. Oh, I did it. Awesome. And that's four $75 gift cards. Whoa, that's, that's nice. insane. All right. I'm, I'm, there's kids stuff. Eh, kids. Who wants stuff for their kids? Good stuff for you. I mean, the kids stuff does. And there's Kid Zone, Climb Zone, Enchanted Castle. Places for your, your kids. Oh, wow. Climb Zone. Places for your kids to get pink eye and pass it on to your, <laughs> you as the parent. Uh, the London House and Lowe's Hotel. There's also that. I mean, there's... There's so many things here that there's definitely something for everybody. Yeah, for everybody to to get something. And if somebody wants to go there and be Dwight and try to guess <laughs> the, the the value of all the gifts, <laughs> Brandon will give you a coaster. <laughs> We're gonna walk around with coasters. Every time I hear the raffle or about a raffle, I just think of that episode of The Office and it cracks me up. You know, I don't know The Office as well as I thought I do because people reference things. I'm like, I don't think I saw that. I mean, I sit through something and laugh for 30 minutes, but I'm not going to be able to tell you about it the next day. I'll just be like, it was funny. <laughs> I've it probably was... watched The Office like 20 times all the way through. Yeah. Because that's, that's become like my filler. Like it, if I'm doing something that I don't want to pay attention, I just throw on The Office and like... I, something like, out in the background. Yeah. It, it absorbs. It's it absorbs. absorbs. Yeah. Take I, my brain. Also, I, I do... I don't want to overlook what we're drinking here because the West Coast style IPA is I'm still one of my favorites. Yep. And uh, Synthesizer Showroom uh, nails it. It's really good. It's a 7%. Yeah, that was fantastic. It's tasty. Yeah, really yeah, tasty. I, really I uh, like it. And the artwork's so cool. Um Excuse me. Normally we post pictures of the beers that we drink, but we're going to do the on, you know on tap picture. I almost said it again. Chicago on tap. Um, hey, what's on tap? Yeah, there we Chicago. go. Chicago. Chicago. Chicago is on You know tap. what? If I say that in my head, it'll make it easier for me. Hey, what's on tap? Chicago. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I said this quiet part. I should have said it loud. Words. Words are I'm hard. I'm blowing it. I'm blowing this. Um, it's very good. Uh, thank you for bringing that. Uh, Glad I'm, you like it. Yeah. I mean, as much as, like I said, I like Hazy's, good old West Coast IPAs. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it has a special place in every, every craft beer drinker's heart. Yeah, for sure. Especially, you know, our age. Dave, what's your go-to <laughs> style? My go-to style? Uh, I would say now that I'm an old man, it is a lager. I mean, like... Chug Life is our shifty at the end of the day at the mm-hmm. tap room for sure. Yeah. And at home, I'll have uh, Chug. Hello, kitty. Yeah. I will here. have Chug, out Chug Life. And I'm not. I have two at home Four myself. Water. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> She's 20. Yeah. Is she really 20? Yeah. Jeez. I, don't, I, guess, I guess that makes sense. Aggie, she makes regular appearances. Outside of a lager, though, yeah, I love a West Coast. Uh, and I love dark ales. Yeah. I'm a big. I've I, I realized the. I enjoy dark lagers a lot. I feel like dark lagers are probably my second or third favorite style, and I learned it while doing this podcast because I used to not really care for lagers, 
Yeah, yeah, there are times like now I'll I'll get different loggers and everything when you know instead of like oh I gotta get an IPA or you know I want to take a break from all that. Speaking of breaks, I think we're right around the break mark. We are. Where are we at? About thirty minutes. Ooh, I'm good. We'll be right back. <laughs> Why don't more infant formula companies use organic, grass-fed whole milk instead of skim? Why don't more infant formula companies use the latest breast milk science? Why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials? Why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk? Why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing? We wondered the same thing. So we made Byheart a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. Why don't more infant formula companies use organic, grass-fed whole milk instead of skim? Why don't more infant formula companies use the latest breast milk science? Why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials? Why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk? Why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing? We wondered the same thing. So we made Byheart a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. And we're back. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome, everybody. It's not the beginning. Welcome back. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that break of ads. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to get some money, baby. I, I, I am going to leave. I'm going to leave this piece yeah, yeah. and put the ads in here. <laughs> David Weeks is with us uh, from Mars and Meals on Wheels. And we're here still talking uh, about um, the Chicago on tap. Nice. Uh, thank you. I did it. I did it. I feel really proud of myself Winner. right now. Yeah. Uh, which is happening uh, Thursday, April 25th, 2024. I don't know what time it starts. 6 p.m. So. Thank you. Um, 6 to 10. Thank you. Wow. You know what? I'm glad you have information. Everyone is prepared. This is all, not me. I've got bits of information. And <laughs> but you guys together. Are yeah. We're a team. You know what? You can come on anytime you want. You can really help us fill in, fill in the blanks here. We tell that to everybody. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> we just love having people come on. <laughs> but you've been a delight so far. So far. So far. We'll see how Hedging second, our bets. We'll see how the second half of this episode goes. Before we get into anything else though, what are we what are we drinking? i I have it in front of me. We are drinking Revolutions Nelson Hero. Let me see if I can use my light to read it. Nope, it's a hazy IPA that comes in at about seven point five percent. What do you guys think of this beer so far? It's fantastic. I'm digging it. I mean I I don't think there's been a, a hero beer that I haven't enjoyed, so pretty much. Yeah, same yep. here. It goes with their um, Freedom series as well. Uh, all of their Freedom beers, I've really enjoyed. Their uh... so this is actually I just looked it up. So it's apparently it's a double. That's where it is because there is a Nelson Hero. This is a double. I apologize. Double dry hop Nelson Hero, which according to Untapped, I have had before. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, the beginning of this year. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it a four and a half. Pretty good. Um, yeah, it's got. I'm assuming. Oh, different hops in there. That's a that's a cryo. I can't I can't pronounce most of these, so I'm not going to try it. I need to learn all the new hops. Brandon and I are home brewers, and they're they haven't brewed a lot lately. Brandon's yeah. about to brew soon. Soon. And it's been a good waiting for my two kegs on tap. One of them to blow, so I got a spot to. There's, Two old Irving beers on tap right here. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just so you know. Well, before you leave, if you'd like. <laughs> uh, yeah, and now I feel like there's so many different hop varieties. Since I haven't brewed in like a couple years, I don't know a lot of them. Which is kind of exciting. It's like starting over. Right. Um, all right, so Whole let's... A new box of crayons. Yeah, absolutely. Have, Dave, have you ever homebrewed? I have not homebrewed. We Ooh. would not want me to homebrew. Oh, it's, it's fun and... Then just becomes a bit of an obsession, and then you have to take a step back for a little bit right, and realize, yeah. okay, you're brewing a lot. Do you have anybody who wants to drink this beer? I mean, you've got friends. Your friends will come by and drink your beer. Don't worry about it. Everybody will, will come by and drink free beer. But they won't give you an honest opinion because it's free beer. <laughs> yeah, they want to keep it flowing. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, yeah, no, it's great. It's great. It's keep, 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 making more. Keep, keep, keep making more beer. Oh, you made a 9% shit beer? I'm getting trashed. It's okay. <laughs> I've definitely made some beers. I'm like, I don't like this. So I was like, Oh my god, this is like the best beer I ever made. And I'm like, I don't. What are you talking about? This is you drink Miller Lite. What do you? What do you? Even <laughs> Not know? even that. It was just like, it was just. I there was something I didn't like about. It. I'm like, I don't like this beer at all. And I don't, I don't think I think I'm gonna dump it. And they're like, Let me let like it was. I brought well, it. And somewhere. we're always gonna be our own. Don't need it. Absolutely. Like, you know what you were trying to do. Yeah. Is it what you wanted? No, it's not. 
So that's your, yeah. Yeah, I feel like that that's probably where it, it falls more on me, is being harsh on myself. But, you know, I give it to these guys, and these guys will will uh, try it and be very honest about it. We're, we're very honest with each other, at least, so that's good. Anyway, let's get off that. Let's go back to Meals on Wheels, uh, <laughs> Chicago on tap. Um, I'm going to go uh, run uh, some of these food vendors, because <laughs> we went through all the breweries. I'm going to do my best to pronounce some of these places. Here There's we go. some tricky names. Asadito Taco, nice. Cajun Cafe Chicago, Ooh. Chubby Boy Burgers, Crust Brewing, uh, Aris Brewery and Cider House, Ivy Room at Tree Studios. Yum. I, I, you're going to have to help me with the, his last name. Kevin? Cudahy. Cudahy, that's right. Private Chef. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say Natari. I, I think, think that might be right. the way. N-E-T-T-A-R-E. Streetville Social, Tempesta Market, Vienna Beef Sausage Company. Ooh. And I think it's Churro Factory, X-U-R-R-O. Mm-hmm. We're just going to go with yeah. that. Yeah, Churro Factory. So that's a that's a nice, wide selection uh, of food. And if you were there last year, you know, it's 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 pretty much covered all like all on the outside. I don't know if it's going to be set up the same way. Mm-hmm. Like, when I say outside, I mean in the room. It's perimeter. like a, Yeah, perimeter. Thank you. Much better. See? What would I be with that? Big words. I, I got big words. <laughs> and I've got a small brain, so that those don't go together. <laughs> But uh, I remember, and this is, there was a, was it pulled, no, was it a brisket that was really good? Was brisket or that? pork belly? Okay. Slider? Yeah, it was a brisket or pork belly that was really good. But also, I remember realizing that there was just Vienna beef hot dogs readily available <laughs> towards the end. Ooh. Like, that was like some of the last food, and grabbing one of those at the end was like, I felt like That's the how best you close out a night. Done. Absolutely. Hot Another dogs. one with grabbing a Vienna beef hot dog right at the end yeah. of a the night especially after having all those beers but yeah all the food is was fantastic i mean you got to imagine you know a place that's you know providing food for you know a bunch of people in the city uh who are there gonna, to enjoy some, yeah they're gonna they're gonna bring in some good food yeah you know so i mean it's there to raise money but uh, yeah it was a very well done event last year yeah you know that, so. and the weather was great especially like i feel like we got real lucky because it was hit that nice little warm spell yeah which i think probably gonna hit because it just it's been a weird like because we're already already in the spring yeah this is not fake spring or third winter this is it yeah i thought uh, i thought for sure we were gonna have like a fake spring and then dip back down it's not my my employees in um and some of my co-workers live in colorado and they just got dumped on with like 20 inches of snow today i'm like snow what they're like oh yeah this is like our snowiest season i'm like what like yeah we had the one big snow we got rain. We got lots yeah. of rain. Yeah. yeah, I'm fine with that. I'll take it. I'll take yeah. all the rain over the snow. That's totally fine. Um, yeah, the, the weather was great, and I can't imagine. I it I can't imagine it being you know bad. But it was nice to like you can go outside, and you can see the lake from. I mean, it's theater on the lake, so you can actually see the lake. You're right there. Yeah, it's it's, it's a beautiful so view. So nice, and uh, a lot of people stayed outside for a bit. You know, it's nice to to get outside from there and yeah. just. Such a great evening. I mean, like you said, you're right there on the lakeshore. So yeah, I love that venue. It's a, it's such a such a great place. I'm really excited to, to go back. We're looking forward to going um, again and not having to worry about... Yes, Peggy, <laughs> thank you. Uh, not having to worry about setting up a little table where we had all our stuff. We had stuff. We had, like, stickers and, like, the malting hour stuff, which was great. Um, but we only used a cocktail table, so mm-hmm. everybody kind of just thought it was a table, which was fine. Put their yeah, we hung out there, but like take a drinks. sticker and a coaster, yeah, take yeah. it to go while you're there, like explaining what we were doing there. So we don't need to do that. We're just gonna walk around and give out stuff. I really enjoyed the event last year because it was one of my first events, actually pouring beer from ours. Nice. And uh, a bunch of my friends were there, you know. So I was like, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Like, of course you are. You love Mars. You love. Uh, Meals on Wheels, you love beer events. Yeah. Like, it was really cool. Yeah, it, it, it's a fun event, and again, you know, the money goes to good cause, goes right back into Meals on Wheels, which is a non-for-profit. Um, you know, what better way to help out, you know, those who need it. And then also, have a nice Thursday night. Take Friday off. Take the 26th off so you can really enjoy yourself on a Thursday. I love that it's on a Thursday. I, I really like Thursdays. Yeah. I enjoy I enjoy Thursday nights out. Walk into the weekend. Exactly. Starting Thursday evening. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's easy to just relax. Like for me, at least in my job, it's it's a little bit slower on Fridays. A lot of the salespeople aren't there, 
So the warehouse work is, is okay. I don't have to tell everybody what to do as much. Everybody just does their thing, and that's it. So it's a good way to get your, your weekend started. Yep. Brandon has been patiently walking back and forth bringing <laughs> Aggie. <laughs> she just keeps coming back. Yeah. I'm like, oh, come She's on, like, girl. I, I just want to hang out with you guys. I'm Sounds like, like we're all cat lovers. Absolutely. We all have cats, which is fantastic. You see you had two cats? I have two. Do you have their names? Spencer and Allie. Those are great names. Part of the same litter. Oh, oh that's they're adorable. adorable. They're the most well-behaved, sweet, loving kitties you've ever met. Cats are the best. Yeah, I do like dogs. Don't get me wrong, dogs are great, but I just came to love cats very much. Mm-hmm. Oh. And you have one or two? Two. We two? yeah, uh, Louise and Judith. We chose very elderly ladies' <laughs> names. <laughs> And to remember the cats, it's easy. It's Louise is Siamese. It rhymes. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I kept it. And they're all... And Judith? Yeah, Judith, she is a... Laura would have a better... I forget what kind of... A tabby? Is she a tabby cat? You know what? Do you know breeds? They're in my background on my phone. She's got to be a tabby. That's a, that's a tabby I cat. I believe that is a tabby. Yeah. I, know my, yeah. I know my cat's breeds. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, and they're a year and... Um... Five months, I think. Oh, four wow. months. Yeah, you got them as kittens. Yeah, we got them when they were a few months old, so that was really Me exciting. too. Mine just turned one. Ah, oh, so we probably got around the same time. Yeah. yeah. Not long ago. That's great. And then you have two? Yep. Uh, two elderly cats. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got two grandmas walking around. A 20-year-old and an 18 or 19-year-old. Yeah. Still kicking. Aggie yep. and... Shotzi. Shotzi. Shotzi's right? such a great name. That's no a great name, Aggie. yeah. No offense, Aggie. Please don't take offense. Yep. Shotzi's like the name. talker. She likes to go around in the middle of the night. And and it's yeah. not that she's talking. She goes and she hunts her toy fish and gets it. And then when she gets it, she starts screaming. And it sounds like she's saying hello. And we've had people like, even like my in-laws will, huh? will stay over and they'll be like, somebody was screaming hello in the middle of the night. I'm like, no, that was the cat. Like, how have you not experienced that yet? Like, literally, like, she's just like. Hello, hello. <laughs> and what it's really creepy is like she'll do it, and sometimes I'll have to creep downstairs to see what's going on, and I'll like shine the light on my phone, and she'll freeze with a fish in her mouth, and then just drop it. That's adorable. And then she runs, and I'm like, she. I mean, she wants to show us her kill. Like, yeah. she, I think yeah. that's what she's trying see to do. Is like, look, look what I got you. Got this fish, the same one I get every night. I like that we detoured into the cats. That yeah, is, you know I, what? that's what we do. We that, do. that is how the podcast works. You find something, <laughs> and it's great. I love it. We should have a whole episode dedicated to the cats. Yeah. I will absolutely be there. You're more yeah. than welcome. We, we can record at my you. house. Fantastic. Sign they, me up. They just got their first, you know, cat tree. Oh, nice. And you know, they jockey for that top position. <laughs> but when they're up there, they just look at me like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to go get me a can of food. <laughs> it's time to eat. Yes. Yes. We yeah. named our housewarming and wedding beer after the cats. So oh, yeah. That's right. Shaggy uh, Tail Pale Ale. Yeah. That's Here amazing. Is. That we were lucky enough to have brewed by the folks at Aleman. Yes, Aleman. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. <laughs> um, I'm sorry about the cat thing, but yeah. I do want to I want to bring it back <laughs> over to the Chicago on tap because I did mention the some of the merchandise and you can... If you go to uh, Meals on Wheels Chicago dot org, um, and you you know, it's, I think it's one of the first things that actually pops up is that the event is happening. Well, it's not. You got to go up to the top and attend events, and then events there is Chicago on tap. Oh yeah, the other thing is the Celebrity Chefs Ball, which you know. Oh, that's an incredible I event. Know. I I used to go to it when it was uh, uh, the whole walk around with all the chefs. So, we, but I mean now it's a full dinner, which is even nicer but anyway i i wanted to talk about i i did mention some of the merch but i didn't want to mention it specifically there is a chicago on tap branded bottle opener and there is a pantry tote bag a trucker hat the chicago on tap t-shirt and the brewer shirt and there's another sponsorship as well but we're talking about swag you can actually buy this stuff now you don't have to i don't is do you know if this stuff will be available at um yeah, I think the shirts might be limited to sure. those who are purchasing tickets. Like if the event sold, sells out, I think there might not be any more shirts. Sure, that makes sense. I, I mean, I'm, I'm wondering if like maybe the bottle opener or the, the bags or the hats might be available, but we'll have to find out. Yeah. But why risk it? Just buy it now. I mean, it's a trucker hat. A little bottle opener. Why don't mm-hmm. you not want a bottle opener? Again, all these you know things that you're spending money on, this goes back uh, to, to Meals on Wheels. So you know, you're buying some things that are... are Helping everybody else here who need meals. Support the cause. Yeah, exactly. 
Do we, we have a, a code we're going to share later, don't we? Yes. The code the code works on... I don't think it works on merchandise. It works on the tickets, though. I You know what? I feel like we've gotten to the point... We Ooh. might be able to share. You know what? Before we do that, let's open another beer. Thank you. <laughs> I like your attitude. Yeah, I would like to choose one more. You guys, go up, go for it. Brandon, we might need different glasses That's because fun. I had a feeling you were going for I, that. We 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 did grab a specific Mars beer for this episode because you were coming. Uh, and it's one that's near and dear to mine and Brandon's heart. It is the uh, Punchki Stout. I love uh, that double milk stout with cocoa nibs and lactose. Um, the design were there so the design of the can is different than last year's and I, I really like this one it's it's a bit cuter uh, if I'm gonna put it in this in, oh thank you Aggie she agrees in your highfalutin <laughs> speak <laughs> um, were there different variants this year of this or was, there was a you, raspberry cream was that last year too was there a no, raspberry last one? year it was a pistachio right I, I think I tried the pistachio I think there were three last year yeah there was three was it marshmallow or something vanilla maybe a little bit more a little more there yeah and this year it was raspberry cream thank so you this was this was at uh, there's a glass oh yeah there um, so beer on the wall still has some of these I did not see the variants uh, variant, I mean the raspberry one. If uh, I, I will double check for it, but the chocolate one was the one that uh, Brandon and I felt. Okay, take it all, man. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, right off the top. I really do like this beer. Mm-hmm. Yep. Ooh. Yeah. So well done. Yeah, last year it blew us away how much. Because it's not like a super sweet, heavy. Right. Um, it's not syrupy. Uh, yeah, it's not exactly. That thick. It's not that heavy. No, it's a very subtle, very tasty adjuncted stout without having giant adjuncts in it. Right. What's the ABV on it? It's a great question. Uh, Grab my spectacles there. here. <laughs> You're in charge, David. It is seven point three percent. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. not, it's like, chocolate. and I think we said this last year too, it's got the, 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 like the, the flavor profile of what could be like one of those thick pastry stouts without it being overly thick, mm-hmm. which makes it easier to drink, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Like this is yeah. like one you could have a can by yourself and be like, oh, for sure. okay with yourself. Um, like, but some of those thick pastry stouts are just like, That's also what am I doing with my life? Sweet. It has yeah. a little, there's a roastiness to oh, it. Oh yeah. Yeah. So there are certain stouts we've talked. Brandon and I have talked about it when it's been on the podcast. There are there are certain stouts, and it has it's. Someone had pointed out it had to been there has to be some sort of roasted malt or a way that a certain malt is used that I get this like metallic y mm. tinny taste yep. from certain stouts that just ah it's such a bummer when I open up a beer and I'm like I love stouts and I have like ah, I really want to like this and it takes me like halfway through the can to finally like oh it's gone now I'm not tasting it. So it's nice that I knew going into this already that I wasn't going to have that experience. Um, so what's? It's, sorry, go ahead. I was, yeah, it's just it's just that this beer in particular, like you said, you can. I could have two of these because they're not super sweet, and if I want to yeah. have like, you know, a couple of stouts, you know, this is the perfect time of year to have it. Sorry. So what was the flavor on this one? There go. Uh, it's just this little, is the yeah. OG, if you will. It's a double milk stout with cocoa nibs and lactose. Mm-hmm. So the cocoa nibs, it's like yeah. chocolate donut, yeah. and some cream. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. fantastic. Super yeah, simple and even, delicious. Even now, um, taking that second or third sip on here, um, I really wish I bought a second one just to have it home. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to go back and grab some more because it's... It's so good. Yeah, it's such a great beer. I have we stumbled upon it last year. And like we said, you know, that was a beer I know that you mentioned first before I did on the malt. Yeah, because I think we... Saw, that was the beginning of this year. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, I thought reactions. we were talking about like... Because I think... We may have both seen it at the same time when it was released. Yeah. We like sent it to each other. And we're like, we've got to try. This yeah, and I grabbed that. I didn't. Did I? I don't remember if I. Gra- I think I grabbed the pistachio one and maybe had it on my own. I don't think I had that one with you. Doesn't sound familiar. Yeah, it was also very good. But I love pistachio. We did a bottle share together at that uh, Guild Row. We did, and I might have had a Punchki Stout at that time because it seems like that was February. I know our. It was December actually. Oh, it was December. Yep. So no, I didn't. It was right before Christmas. I remember that. I like, couldn't go. A couple weeks before Christmas. Why couldn't I go? 
I don't know. You were going to go, and then something came up last minute. But no. that was uh, Rachel's thing that she mm-hmm. threw together. That was really That nice. was fun. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot fun. of good beers there. Sorry, a lot of beers I had never heard of. Yeah, well. Rachel, if you're still listening, can you do that again? I know you're busy with other stuff. Ooh, and there it is. We're blasting off into outer space. Up and away. <laughs> uh, I love pointing things out. Clark appreciates when I point things out in the background. Um, I think I think it's safe to maybe give out this code. Yeah. Do you guys think it's safe? Do you, like, Do you think listeners have held on long enough? They're they waiting. should have. I feel like they're they good won't. listeners and they stuck with us. Yeah. I think so. I think we can do this. Who's, who has the code, or who knows the code? Who is it? Who will get to it first? Frantically searching. Brandon, I don't think you actually have it. Oh, right, maybe you do have it. You do have it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Who's going to find it first? I don't remember. Aha, uh-huh. I um, found it. David found it. David, you win. The discount code. Are you ready, listener? Write it down. Listener. <laughs> Listeners. Listeners. <laughs> He's speaking but I'm, now. I'm the speaking royal to listener. Each, each the, one yeah. individually. Yeah. The royal we. You, fellow listener. There you go. Because I'll be listening, too. Thank you. Uh. Shy on tap VIP. So, shy on tap VIP. That's your discount code. There it is. It'll you know, get you fifteen dollars off the ticket price. That is uh, for a beer festival. Like it's, I consider I think it's not you know a beer festival, but for all the breweries that we named, there's all the pours. You know, it's unlimited. It's not like it's ticketed pour, but there's food involved as well. That's Pretty good, and the you know the money is going to a, a really good cause. I can't stress that enough. I know I said it last time we did this episode that I uh, meals on wheels for me. I remember the youth group thing that uh, was a whole summer long thing, That's whatever. But one of the things I liked doing the most was we got to prepare food uh, with meals on wheels, and so we were putting together meals that were being going to be delivered that day uh wow. yeah so that was it was really nice to be a part of that and seeing that and not knowing anything about it and this is me like in, in high school so like 30 years ago uh and not knowing anything about that and knowing you know and learning about it at such a young age and realizing you know there's a need for that and being able to be a part of it i've always known about you know meals on wheels so it's, it's always been something that's I've, I've really loved and i know that everybody most of the people that I know around me have, uh, you know, had the same amount of love and respect for it, and under, you know, may have even had to, you know, use it for someone right. or, or know it's somebody that's used it. Our moms, our dads, our Absolutely. aunts, our uncles, our neighbors, you know, coworkers, who knows? Yeah, I don't know anyone that's personally used it, but I've, I've just known about Meals on Wheels for quite a long time. Um, and it's a great organization, and I'm happy that they're around, and it's it's great that they do fun events like this yeah. that allow people to experience things like i mean there's a lot of beer events but like one that's cultivated for like good food and like you know high quality beer like especially chicago beer that's yeah. awesome mm-hmm. and chicago food i mean hand in hand yeah, right yeah there so it's uh it's really it's a chicago event absolutely it's super exciting do you guys want to do one more beer or do we, what do you think here how are you guys feeling it's up to you yeah well, i'm feeling great all right you know what? Let's do the, let's do the pale ale. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll 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 finish this up, discuss this, and uh, we'll be on our merry way. Awesome. This one is before I pour it. This will be easier. Do you want to go back to your other glass? Yeah, because I don't want to. I don't want to. Well, I have my other glass here. Sorry. There's that. Thank you. This is Hot Butcher for the World, another uh, brewery that will be participating um, with the Chicago on tap. This is their beer, Sliders, which is oh god, I'm spilling a beer. I spilled it. Mosaic. <laughs> maybe I don't need this. Mosaic Simcoe. Good night. At Nelson's Upon American Pale Ale. I was trying to read it, and the way that the label's on there, it didn't. I, that didn't. That's know. a fun label too, with the three little sliders standing Absolutely. on top of each other. You and know, Dan. hopefully, hopefully they bring this beer there because what a perfect way, uh, you know, to incorporate uh, some food. I mean, that's great. I love, I love Hot Butcher stuff. They do really good beers. Thank you, sir. Um, mm-hmm. They're Mainly known for their hazy IPAs, but they have some solid lagers. They have some solid stouts, um, stouts uh, and pale ales. So this is a pale ale, but it's a very that. hazy. It's pale a hazy ale. one. Yeah, yeah. I always love the aroma of hop butchers stuff. Like, I want this to be a candle, like a nice hoppy candle for bath time. Absolutely, <laughs> a bath bomb maybe that just smells like this Ooh, would be yes. fantastic. 
Yeah, business mind. idea. Yeah. You know what? That is a business idea. There's no bath bombs that are like hot profile. That's Nobody take this idea. We, we're copywriting right now. It's me, David, and Brandon. We're going into business. We're we got it. We're Sorry, done. you're too late. Yep. We copyright, 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 copyright. Don't, <laughs> don't do it. Uh, how about you? We're going to contact you also and see if maybe you want to be a part of this. <laughs> um, no, it's uh, having. So Hot Butcher is one of the breweries that wasn't a part of this last year. So I was pretty excited to see them uh, a part of it. Um, I think, you know, Hot Butcher went from, as soon as they opened, I feel like they kind of just took off. They, they, they hit the ground running. They were a big pandemic beer mm-hmm. uh, also. Like, I feel like it was, everybody it was, it was a, a, a shining little beacon because there was a different beer. They, they do like different beers pretty much every week. Which is an interesting way of doing it. They don't just yeah. have like flagship beers out there. So, you know, if you like hazy IPAs, they're you know, hot butcher will be there. Yeah, I feel like there was a lot like you mentioned pandemic beers, but I feel like there was a lot of places that popped up and kind of shined during mm-hmm. the pandemic. And what I think about that, like Goldfinger's one. Yeah. Like they came out of nowhere and just started like Man, producing they have really beers. Good beers. Yeah. I, I really need to go for they have all those different events that they do for like different type of lager releases and i feel like i really i'm snoozing on all events to be honest it sounds like that's what that's what i'm admitting tonight on this podcast it's coming out <laughs> yeah. it's in the open. turns out as much as i support by beer i'm like I'm not going to the events apparently there's nothing wrong with that like hey supporting the beer that's all the best you can do <sighs> but all these events sound so fun well that's true too. <laughs> especially the synth fest I mean, that's that sounds pretty great yeah synth fest was awesome but I, Portuguese Fest was awesome. Damn it. See, it was a Portuguese Fest? See, exactly. Yes. Okay. Oh, every we year there's a Portuguese yeah. Fest. I don't know why we would have thought otherwise. It's, it's <laughs> like, it's like off for the wall. We fail. Yeah, we're not good Well, then this. put 420 Ooh, on your calendar. It's the worst podcast. 420? Ever. What's going on at 420? <laughs> it's Mars. There'll be an event. That yes. makes sense. Yes. I know a guy who will join me. <laughs> I know a couple guys who will join me. Like, I'd go. Yeah, Sounds I know fun. you'd go. Um... Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm really. Ex- I'm, I am really excited to to go to this event again. I'm glad. You know, there's some breweries that have come back. Some new breweries. Um, like we said, there's a lot of people that have been um, on the podcast. Technically, now Mars has been on, but we'll do the. the we got to get the brewers. We'll do an official Mars episode. Exactly. Yes. You know, I mean, and even if it's just you, that's okay. Well, we got to get anybody else. on too. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We we will figure that out. Uh, but if you want to come see all of us, are you, are you pouring at the event? Or are you going to you be better pouring? believe it. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That, that's great. I bet you Matthew can probably, from Old Irving. Oh, yeah, Matthew. I think I said you were going to be on this episode. Sorry. I didn't know there was going to be. I thought we were not going to have enough mics. <laughs> Maybe next week, Matthew. I keep saying that. He's like the Matt Damon now. He's yeah. like of, of, of Jimmy Kimmel. Next week. You'll be on next week. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, please forgive me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want to meet David, he's going to be there pouring. Brandon and I will be walking around for sure. Um, Matthew from Old Irving will be there. Our buddy Joe from Crush Crushed by Giants. Giants. I almost said double clutch. Dry, Crushed by Giants, Dry, dry Hop, and Corridor will be there. Don't know from who from Revolution. Um, Michelle from Eris. Yes. Oh, Michelle will actually be there? Bruce from Go. Oh, man, you got everybody. I think there. it's Eric from Flipside. Nice. <clears throat> yeah. It's got like a list of like everyone that's required to be yeah, there. You want to be there, uh, but yeah, some guests who have been on the podcast will be there um, pouring beer. So come on out and hang out with us. It'll be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. You can uh, fight me if someone's doing uh, a pork belly and there's a last piece. You can fight me for it. <laughs> I'm sure I'm gonna grab it. Maybe take it and throw it on the hot dog. Who knows? What? Yeah, I just blew your mind. Man. Pork belly hot dog. <laughs> Let's go. That sounds really good. We should go to this event. This sounds great. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's see. Let's do one more quick little plug here. We'll, it'll be in the, the links as well. But uh, go to mealsonwheels.org. I'm sure there's a slash in here. You know what? If I grab this, it is slash. Oh, it's not going to show me on my phone. You know what? If you go to mealsonwheel.org, top right, there's a, you know, those two little, three little bars. Go to uh, attend events and you'll see Chicago on tap. Again, it is Thursday, April 25th, 2004. 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Theater on the Lake. Um, It's going to be fantastic. You can buy tickets now. Tickets are available. They are $75. And with our super code, which is... 
Cheyenne Tap VIP. VIP. Thank you. I thought I was right. It'll save you fifteen dollars. You're paying sixty bucks. Sixty bucks. There are other, uh, you know, uh, beer events and things like that uh, that'll come up. That'll be the same price. But uh, you know, this is going to Meals on Wheels, and there's food involved, and we'll be there, and it'll be great. It's so be a good sh- time. Yeah. And it, the Leadfoot Band. And the Leadfoot Band, exactly. And you're right there on the lake. It's gonna be awesome. Um, as we get you know closer, we'll, we'll we'll keep talking about it. But David, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks uh, for having on, me. Yeah. On behalf of Mars and, and Meals on Wheels, we we really do appreciate it. I'm glad we finally get to hang out and talk with you, and we look forward to doing it again soon. Cool. We'll come bother you at the event as well. Please do. Um, yeah. Do you have anything else you wanted to throw out there at all? I hope to see all of you there. Fantastic. Yeah. It's gonna nice be fun. We. Well said, Brandon. You got anything? No. Thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah, I love you, man. Love you too, bud. See everybody next week. Cheers. Cheers. This has been The Malting Hour. Be sure to follow us on all social media by searching The Malting Hour and at themaltinghour.com. You can also follow us individually on social media. Brandon can be found on Instagram as bmdub81, on Twitter, bdub81, and on untapped as bdubdrinksbeer. Tony can be found on Instagram and untapped under Ace of Help Chicago, on Twitter, the Ace of Help Chicago. Clark can be found as Clarkowski on all three. Dan can be found on Instagram as hip underscore underscore hops and hip hops on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe, like, and rate the show on your preferred podcast listening platform. Until next time, cheers from all of us at the Malting Hour. Why don't more infant formula companies use organic, grass-fed whole milk instead of skim? Why don't more infant formula companies use the latest breast milk science? Why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials? Why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk? Why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing? We wondered the same thing. So we made Byheart, an infant formula company on a mission to get a lot closer to the most super, super food on the planet, breast milk. Our patented protein blend has more of the important and most abundant proteins actually found in breast milk. We're the first and only U.S.-made formula to use organic, grass-fed whole milk, not skim. We even conducted the largest clinical trial by a new infant formula company in a quarter century, with clinically proven benefits like easier digestion, less spit-up, and softer poops versus a leading infant formula. And we make our own formula in the USA and our very own factories in Iowa, Oregon, and Pennsylvania. Byheart, a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. Why don't more infant formula companies use organic, grass-fed whole milk instead of skim? Why don't more infant formula companies use the latest breast milk science? Why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials? Why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk? Why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing? We wondered the same thing. So we made Byheart, a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com.